Okay. Uh, so my talk is titled Navigating the Promised Land. That was kind of catchy. Uh, it's basically a kind of an introduction to promises and JavaScript. Um, my name is Mike McCauley. I've uh, been doing JavaScript for about two and a half years. Um, I love it compared to the, the Java world. I, I came from there, and I loved Java when I was there too, but um, I'm just kind of the guy who likes that. Um, I work for a company called Avature. We do a mix of like defense contracting and um, startups, which is a kind of funky mix, but it, it, it's actually really cool. <clears throat> All right, so what I want to talk to you about today is promises. So we're going to, I'm going to give you an example of what kind of happened without promises and, and kind of the promise we have, and then what promises uh, can help us to solve. And I'll talk about how we use them and then kind of potential pitfalls as well. So uh, I like examples. They help me think. So we're going to start with an example. Um, we'll kind of use this example as we go through. I'm going to use uh, jQuery animate as our... Um, callback function uh, that we're going to use. Um, it's slightly contrived. Um, the jQuery experts, I challenge you to come up with to me afterwards and tell me the best way you could do this without any promises, and you don't need promises for this. Um, but the idea here is really just kind of demonstrate those concepts. So um, we'll use it for that. And it's visual. That's kind of the nice thing. All right, so real simple example, basically. I have this little box here. It's very cute. Um, they're going to go down. They're going to go up and right. I'm going to go a little translucent, wide, and I'm going to go back, right? So I want to actually interactivity. Woo. Okay, so that's pretty much it, right? I'm just going to run it again because you're going to be seeing this a lot, um, and you know, need to know that you're doing it right. Um, all right, so there you go, down, up and right, translucent, and then back. All right, so we're going to start this uh, this real simple kind of uh, chain of things without promises. Uh, all right, so for those who don't know the API, we have a uh, API reference here. Um, you call it elements, you wrap the element in your jQuery, and then you call it animate, you pass it the options you want to change, you pass the duration, and then you pass a callback. And this callback is, is a function you pass that will get called when you're done, when that animation is done. So for example, this is our um, going down and up. So we wrap the element in jQuery, we call it animate, and we're going to actually send the, the top element, we're going to add 50 pixels, which will actually make it go down. And then wait for a, for a second, do that over a second, and then when we're done with that, go ahead and do the same thing with animate, but then we're going to go back up. So we run this, nice, beautiful, excellent. Um, this is pretty readable, I think. It's clear to tell what's kind of going on, except for that top thing being a little um, uh, strange. All right, but let's keep going, let's do the entire um, set of steps that I needed to do to, to get here. Um, so we animate top, then we go to top left, you see it kind of going back up there, then we're going to make it wide and, and have an opacity of 0.5, and then we're going to kind of go back and put those all back. So you'll see here, it works. No, it's up in the corner. Oh, well, I guess you can't see it. Well, there we go. Uh, but, so, there's some problems here, is we're, we're going kind of to the right a lot faster than we're kind of going down. So reading this, I kind of see what's going on in terms of readability, if I was going to look at this, and I'd say, yeah, I can see what's going on, but do I really like this? Um, it's, it's kind of hard to, it's hard to see. We're going to the right more than we're going to the down, right? So this is called um, the Pyramid of Doom. So let's go ahead and refactor uh, and see, okay, actually, I think I know what that is. There we go. I was zooming and being too, uh, Slick. So, I think we're still going to be forced into some unwise decision, even doing all our refactoring without introducing promises. Alright, so let's go ahead and declare our functions beforehand. Um, this is the first thing I do when I um, am refactoring and try to extract functions, right? So, here's a function to do left full. This is the end step. Um, and I'm doing that, that last step. And then the, the, the second to last step, I'm calling it wide see through. And when it's done, I'm going to essentially call left full, right? So, I'm just kind of chaining these out. Um, and I keep keep going upright, and I call white see through. And then at the, at the very bottom, I call you know animate. And when you're done, call upright, which then calls white see through. And you'll notice what I'm doing here is this is this is fine. Um, we flatten the pyramid, um, but now it's harder to read. It's harder to understand what's going on. Uh, someone comes to this at the beginning. Uh, they're going to look at the top of your code, start reading through. Like what, what where's left full being used? Oh, okay. So you're going to end up reading from the bottom up. So it's not really uh, easy to read. It's not very easy to understand. 
and we have all this really tight coupling between all our functions. Okay, so we flattened it, the pyramid, uh, but it's still harder to read. Can anyone actually see the code okay back there? Okay, great. That's some ugly code. Let me just make sure I had, oh, okay. Don't worry, it's, it still is ugly. Um, we're gonna keep trying, we're gonna kinda say, okay, well, that's because you're tightly coupling your code. Let's uh, change this to, to do the kind of the typical callback style you'll see in a lot of um, like node APIs or, or um, callback based APIs. So we, we define left full, um, we'll call it white C3, but instead of actually coupling it straight to left full, we're gonna call, um, I'm just gonna pass the callback. Same thing upright. So we're still doing, we still have the same problem, but we're hopefully a little bit more reasonable functions here, right? Um, so then at the end of this, we're going to call um, element animate this is our first step, move it down, and then we're going to call upright, followed by wide see-through, followed by left full, right? That's going to give us that animation that's going to work just perfectly, right? This is, this is readable, I think, you know, looking at this. Um, so let's go ahead and run it, and you'll notice it's doing the wrong animation. So it went wide, uh, let's see, I'm going to try it again. It went wide and, and kind of translucent first. So maybe when you first were seeing this code, I know it's uh, the first time you're kind of looking at it, uh, you, you realize what was going on uh, right away. But what's happening is I'm calling upright, and I'm actually invoking it right away. I think I'm just kind of passing it in as this callback chain, but I'm not. I'm actually invoking it. So upright is being called right away. Actually, probably the way the expressions evaluate, wide C3 is actually getting called first, which is why you saw, probably saw it do that wide C through, and then it went through and it did these other animations. So that's no good. Um, um, this is called callback hell, right? So now I have to manage all these callbacks and um, I'm gonna send them through, but I still want it to be kind of readable. So we can fix this uh, with uh, some little bit of functional programming, um, something called lodash partials. Uh, basically you can kind of use those, I, I won't go into it, uh, but basically you can kind of set up your, your callback to be set, set there so it doesn't get called right away. Um, so it kind of returns a new function with that callback already set up. Um, basically, it's, it's as hard to explain to, to, a new, to a new person in JavaScript as it was for me just to, to explain it right there. Um, <laughs> so that's, that's actually kind of a problem, right? We want to make a nice, simple animation that people can read. We want our code to be readable. Uh, and yes, this works. Uh, the animation ran successfully and everything, right? But that's not uh, very useful. So, uh, that's ugly code. There we go. Back to the ugly code. So, here, just kind of a summary. We've got code declared before it's used. We still have to do, kind of do that, especially in these, these functions. Uh, we had to resort to the advanced functional programming even just to get to work. And this didn't even handle things like error conditions. If you've ever had to handle a callbacks with, with errors that can, that can err on any part of the step, um, it just gets 10 times worse. Or what, for example, what if they said, well, do these two things at the same time. Um, do, the, do that animation, but instead of doing the, the up and right in one call, do two exact things at the same time, they're different. And then, and then when they're both done, then continue on to the next step. Um, it just gets very hard and very difficult very quickly with callbacks. Then, Error promises. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So a promise is an object that represents the return value or thrown exception that the function may eventually provide. So I'm going to read those to you. Um, these are from the QGIS docs. Uh, they're very good. There's also lots of great articles out there. Um, highly recommend you check them out if you're interested in diving a little deeper with promises. All right, I'm following the Q, uh, Q's convention, actually. They start in the middle, which kind of shows you what you can get and why you want to do this before you jump into how to create a promise. So I'm going to follow their example. Okay, so the, the heart of all promises is that then function. That then function takes two other functions as arguments. Um, one to be called on success, and one to be called on errors, uh, called resolve and reject most of the time. All right, so let's go back to our example um, and pretend that we have gone through, oops, there we go. You click on the CSS animation, a uh, little change here that gives you right up to there. Um, let's go ahead and pretend we've defined our, our functions up, up top uh, and, and said we've uh, converted them to promises already. And this is kind of the code that we can get to um, as a first step. So we can say, go down and pass in that element. 
then we can say, then return and go upright. And then when that's done, go wide see through. And then when that's done, go left full. Um, already you can see this is getting a little bit more readable. There's not a pyramid of doom, but it's also very, um, very sequential and it's very easy to read and understand what's going on. Okay, so how do we get there? Step one, let's research some libraries. You know what? I'm trying to think. Okay, no, I did not skip any. Research some libraries. Okay, so there's, this is like five of the 50 that are out there. So go ahead and research your libraries, type promises in Google, and do a trade study, find which one's the best, um, you know, do a detailed analysis. Um, you'll, you'll probably feel something like this. Like, you know what, I just want to make my own promise library, because then I'll really understand it, and then everybody will cover everything, no one else will need it. <laughs> um, but, uh, I'm just kidding, there's, there's not really that many, like, the XKCD uh, cartoon was about uh, standards. Luckily, in, for JavaScript promises, there's really just kind of three kind of categories that I'm, I'm kind of talking about here. Um, one is called Promises A+. This is a spec, this is a series of tests uh, that, you need, that your library should pass. Uh, if you want to be promises A plus uh, compliant. And most of those li libraries that you see out there are, except for one major exception, which we'll talk about later. Um, and then there's native browser support, which is just coming out on the, on the, uh, to the browsers. And actually, that's what I'm going to use for all my examples, because if you're very soon, you'll be able to use this. Um, if you don't, there's a shim out there that, that gets what you want. The nice thing about promises is they're just kind of a library. You don't need a lot of... Uh, crazy shimming like uh, web components or anything like that to, to put in advanced features. They're just a library. So uh, the, the promises shim works pretty works actually really well. Um, and then there's jQuery deferreds, which are kind of like promises, um, but not really. They don't actually pass the, the A plus spec. It's a whole uh, nuances article about uh, avoiding them and you should too. Um, is, is, the, is the native browser uh, implementation is that A plus compliant? You know, I looked and I tried to see see if it was, but I, I'm I think it is. I really tried to look up and say it's promise, native promises, and um, I couldn't tell Nick. So I will try to find out later and tell you. Okay. Um, so let's let's go ahead and convert one of our callbacks into a promise to see how. Uh, so now we're kind of at the beginning. We start at the middle. Um, let's let's see how we we can go ahead and do that. I'm going to actually use those native JavaScript promises because they have a feature that I like over like my favorite library up until then, which was uh, QJS, which is still an excellent library, by the way. Okay, here's our old code. Uh, very familiar. Go down, right? Just element animate. And we, uh, I changed it a little bit. We're taking an element and a callback now. Um, we're just going to pass that callback directly in there. Um, for the promises, it's very similar. We uh, return a new promise, and you pass in uh, two... With the promise, you can pass in uh, two things, a, a function resolve, uh, which takes resolve, and also you can, the second parameter here is reject. Since I'm doing animate, um, it's not really a way for it to kind of fail, so we'll talk about errors later. Um, so we're kind of simplifying it out here. But basically what we can do is we just go ahead and say, well, when you're done, resolve, right? Um, and that's, that's it, really, really simple so far um, in terms of creating a basic promise. Okay, so let's kind of chain this together. Uh, let's go ahead and do our next one. Uh, we have go down defined as a promise. Here's our go upright uh, defined. That's probably a better name, go upright. Um, then there's our resolve. And then we can actually just go ahead and just call go down, then go up, then return, go upright. So you'll notice I'm returning uh, these promises. They, they chain. And the reason uh, you, you want to do this is, is go, the next code can wait on that promise's resolve. So when that when when go down finishes, it uh, I'm sorry when upright finishes, um, the next promise in that in that promise chain will can wait until that one's ready to go and then it will get called. So that's why you always want to return your promises. And I'm not doing that here, um, but I should be I should be typing return right here in front of go down. Um, that's a that's a tip. You should always do that. And so on and so forth. So we go ahead and continue down all our. Um, all our examples, and you guys have seen this code before uh, a couple slides ago. Uh, fairly simple uh, and fairly readable, kind of where we were trying to go. Um, except it's still a little unwieldy. 
Uh, I was using closures for the element, and all those anonymous functions um, kind of bother me, right? So this function right here is doing exact. This then function is existing solely so I can pri call another promise. It'd be nice if I could just kind of say, um, go down, then upright, then white see through. And the good news is that we can. Um, promises, another thing that they can do, which is uh, nice and handy, is they can return values to the next, uh, to the next promise. Um, you just call resolve with that, with that value. So um, before we had our new code, which was calling this, this resolve straight up. Um, this time, though, we're going to actually uh, modify a little bit and make, it, make that anonymous function down here. And then we're going to resolve with that element. And what that will do is it will return the element that we were called with out to the next, uh, next promise handler. Any questions so far? Am I going too fast? Going fast enough? Okay, great. Okay, so then if we do that, uh, these two things are equivalent, and my uh, the highlighter got messed up here, um, but that's not a comment. Uh, I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. Uh, we define our upright, go down, the way we, with our newer, the newest way of doing it, right? Um, we call go down, and then uh, this is the old way. We call it return a function that takes element now. So element is that what was returned, and we can go ahead and pass that straight into upright, or because we're returning that element, uh, we can actually just call it straight uh, directly. We, this, this, if you're doing this ever, you're, you're being redundant. If you're passing the function, you declare an anonymous function, and then passing that immediately to something else, you can just replace that whole call with that, that function. So I can just replace um, then new function with element and just pass it up, right? So that gets us nice and readable, nice and clean, and uh, nice and awesome. Okay. So if we have to all our, all our functions use chaining, then we get this nice, beautiful, elegant solution. Go down, then upright. It's also very readable. It reads like English, right? And that's what you want your code to be. Beautiful. All right, so pretty cool. And that is, it's just a glorified uh, refactoring tool, right? And, and no, it's not. Um, they really start to shine when you can use them as a control library. And I'll kind of talk to you about uh, what that means. All right, so let's complicate our example a little bit. Um, new requirement from our, uh, from our users or our analysts. They say, you know what, Mike, that's great. You got that cool box thing. Um, but it would be really nice if we could put a little uh, GitHub Gravatar on there. Um, but you can't do it. No one wants to see that Gravatar until after that second step. Um, and you can't fetch that image before, beforehand either. So OK, that's fun. Um, so how might this work? First, uh, luckily, if, if we did this with callbacks, it would be just as difficult as before. Um, and this, before when I was saying if you knew jQuery animate, you could probably find a way of doing all those animations in nice, concise, readable code. This is where this would be completely breaking your, your nice jQuery um, awesomeness. Uh, this is a new type of requirement. It's not based in a single kind of domain. Now we're, we're reaching across different domains. We're, different asynchronous domains. One we're animating, one we're actually going out to the server and waiting and getting some data. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and wrap uh, and get, grab some of that JSON. Um, I told you guys before that we, we wrap jQuery promises, and this is pretty much how you can do it with native promises. Um, there's a little fetch with the URL. Um, jQuery will, by, by default, returns a jQuery deferred object, um, which is a bad promise. Uh, Although I've read somewhere they may be fixing them. Does that, anyone, anyone know if that's true? Okay. Well, don't use them anyway. They lost their chance. Um, so if you want a promise that will, uh, that will kind of wrap jQuery's uh, deferreds, uh, you just kind of do it with this way. There's, uh, if you're using like other libraries, they all have a way of uh, wrapping each other's promises in a way because they all follow the same um, uh, A plus spec, right? So, um, don't be worried about locking yourself into a uh, promise library. If some other API that you're using, um, they're using promises and they're using RSVP JS, and you prefer to use uh, like Q, um, you can just essentially whatever promises they have, you can wrap them in your. Um, they have this super short, concise syntax of wrapping other promises 
in your promises, and then you can go off and use them uh, as much as you like. Okay, so that's that's getting some that JSON. Um, we've got some glue code here for uh, fetching a user, which just, just wraps that fetch call in a uh, user. Now, notice I just returned it, so the fetch is returning a promise. I'm going to return a, uh, from this guy. Um, what this guy is returning is a promise as well. So these are all kind of promisifier sort of methods. You're, you're in the promise land now, so you need to stay there. Okay, uh, then I'm going, to have a, I'm going to have a click button, just like I've always had, and I'm also going to have an input. I want to be able to press enter on that input. Um, so when I press enter and it's a 13, I'm going to call submit and render. Um, and then basically I grab the button, I get the input, I fetch the user based on that input value. So that would be a GitHub username. Um, and then we, with that output, I'm just going to get that, I'm just going to stuff it in the DOM, because that's awesome. That's the best way to do it. <laughs> so here we go. I'm going to test my internet connection. I'm going to add service worker. <laughs> Alright, uh, let's try uh, me. Fetch. Yay! Okay, so there's all my my uh, GitHub info. And if I type nothing, if I type gobbledygook, nothing happens. Okay, great. So I'm not handling errors very well. Um, let's see, do I handle? Okay. So now let's, let's go to the next step, which is doing what my users required me to do, right? Uh, Instead of rendering it and stuffing it all in JSON, I'm actually going to grab the, uh, there's a URL in that JSON called avatar URL that I can then just um, append and stick inside my block. Uh, you probably wouldn't ever do this, uh, or maybe you would, I don't know, uh, with uh, just straight up stuff, stuff in there like that, but uh, this is, that's the beauty of uh, doing a presentation. You just hack your way to get what you want to do, right? Uh, okay, so I'm going to grab my block, grab my input. Um, and then here's back to our animate down. I changed it again from go down to animate down. Um, so that's it's progressive, guys. Um, so I'm animate, animate down my block, and then, but luckily I still have, I'm still keeping that, that return value that's changing it in, right? So um, then I'm animating up right. And then, so after that, that's when my user requirement is. So that's this new function here. So I have my element that I returned from my previous one. So now, at this point, I'm going to fetch that user, and then when that's done with my input value, then when that's done, I'm going to grab that, that JSON will be coming back, right? So this is just that wrapped up jQuery deferred coming back to me as now my, my nice promise. Um, and then I'm going to return a uh, render image. And render image is not a promise, so it's not necessarily uh, chaining, but you don't, have to you don't have to return a promise uh, from a promise handler for it to still kind of chain. So, Right here, I'm just returning that same element up here in render image. And what that will let me do is this will bubble back up to here, uh, and then it'll bubble up to here, and then it'll kind of go down to the next promise handler. So, uh, and then finally, we'll continue on with that element into animate white half and animate left full. All right, so let's, let's try this. Let's do um, Zach Leet. Yeah, how do you say your name? Leet? No. Sorry. <laughs> All right, so there's a button. Uh, image loaded. Yay! I'm zooming on him. <laughs> Our illustrious organizer. Thanks. Okay. Um, great. And we can do other people. T. Mark Tinson, for example. And well, that will just kind of fetch and, and, and render that image and, and replace it, right? So that's pretty cool. Other things that are, that are, are of note here uh, that you can do with promises is that you can... Um, you can nest these things, so you you can still kind of you can still build your own pyramid of doom here if you're not careful. You'll notice already I'm I'm moving in pretty far here, and the only reason I'm doing that is uh, is I have this el element here, and I want to use this el element down here, uh, and I also want so that I partially so I can return it, but also so I can render that image. Um, and you can with JavaScript scoping, so this all these all these functions that are in here are within the scope of this function that was just up here. So I can, uh, this is kind of a way of using a previous promise, not just your, your immediately previous promise, but your maybe a couple, couple back, for example. Um, it's, a, it's a way of grabbing that, because otherwise I'd be returning JSON and then passing JSON to animate white half. I don't want to do that, I want to make sure I, if I'm going to be going back to the chain, I want to pass it what I want, the, the elements that they, ex they expect. Um, so this is a, a, a technique you can use to, uh, 
to keep scope with other things. Uh, other things you can do is you can return, um, if you want to keep, uh, return multiple things, uh, you can return an array of items uh, to get there. And then most of the time if you want to return an array of items, uh, a lot of the libraries will give you like a spread operator or spread function that will kind of decompose that array for you as you, uh, so you can have a, a then function with more than just JSON. This could be EL comma JSON, for example. All right. Uh, let's see, just peek ahead at the next slide. Uh, error handling. Okay, so let's, let's demonstrate error handling. So let's say I type my name wrong. I hope there's not someone out there. Do you know there's someone out there named Foo? Um, Foo. There's a Foo username, GitHub username. There he is. Uh, I don't know if that's probably no one, but... Um, but you'll notice when I, when I type something that's wrong, uh, the animation just stops, right? So something happens, uh, and mo most likely if you're in, promise, in the promised land, uh, you won't see anything happen if you're not handling your errors correctly. So I'll, I'll kind of talk to you about how we can handle our errors um, correctly. All right, I'm gonna take a drink. Mark it with <laughs> Okay, so promises can't be broken, unlike this one, or, this is <laughs> ironic being in this building, um, but they can be rejected, um, and we'll talk about that. Okay, so there's two ways you can handle rejection. Um, if a promise gets, promise gets rejected, it's kind of like, uh, well, I didn't practice this part, but it's kind of like the... You're rejected, you're going to go off, the promise will go off and just sit in the corner waiting for someone to come and console you or handle your error for you. Um, if you forget to be that person for that, your promise, your promise will just sit there in the middle of nowhere and do nothing. And you won't see a stack trace, you won't see any kind of indication that your promise has failed, uh, and you'll be like, what's going on with my, with my promises? I'll, I'll keep clicking that button, maybe it'll be different this time. Uh, so the, what you should do, the, what, the point of all that was that you should handle your errors and your promises. All right, so here's, here's two ways to handle uh, rejection in our promises. Uh, the first one, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on our code a little bit more. All right, here's our animate down, animate up right, uh, and then we have our function. Um, so fetch user, which we saw, if you type in a bad username, it can be rejected. Uh, then your then call then won't get called because uh, it won't. It's, you don't have that JSON to be called, right? So that's your happy path. Your happy path won't be called. What you can do is pass in a second function to your, uh, to your promise uh, handler. So that's the then call. And that takes in the error. Um, if your error, uh, then you can kind of do stuff with your, your error handling. Um, in this case, I'm just going to stick in a giant X onto my block. And then I'm going to actually go ahead and continue that chain, that EL um, just because I want it to keep going. So let's show, uh, let's, that's actually what happens here. Uh, I'm going to type in nothing, and they'll say, oh, I can't get anything, there's no such user, 404, and I'll stick a, a big X in there. And if I go back and I put uh, Nick Nisi here, uh, I'll get his avatar. Okay, so, so that's kind of smart error handling, uh, or error recovery. Um, the other way, which is, um, but it's actually what I'd recommend, I'd recommend you trying to avoid this, in my experience. Um, for me, the best way to, to handle these errors is this dot .catch, or in Q is called dot .fail. Most libraries have one. It's equivalent, and I'll show you the equivalent um, with the pure standard Java uh, promises later. Um, but basically, I'll say if left full fails, or actually because there's, let's pretend this one's not here, and I'm not handling any errors, and I'm just going to be stopping in the middle, right? Uh, this catch, uh, just like promise values, they will, they will kind of bubble to the next uh, handler. Uh, so if, if an error happens in here in fetch user, the next handler, uh, it'll look for the next handler chain. Is there an error handler here? Okay, no, then what's the next one? Okay, what's the next one, what's the next one? And if, if, you, if you don't care about until the end what if something failed there, uh, you can put this at the end and it'll catch all your errors that might happen. Um, or you can put this, uh, at the end of, uh, you can say fetch user and then dot catch, and that will catch things that happen in uh, any errors that might happen in fetch user. Now, why uh, do I recommend catch instead of using your uh, this this 
comma, failure handler. Um, well, the reason is, is you might think, looking at this code, and I've often thought this, uh, well, if render image fails, then this, this error handler is what's going to get called. Looking at the code, that's what you naturally, uh, naturally see. You look at this, uh, uh, sorry, I'll zoom in a little bit. Uh, looking at this, I'll say, okay, well, there's my error right there. So if, this, if render image fails for some reason, uh, it just blows up, I mean, it shouldn't, but if it does, uh, this is what gonna, it's because it's close together to it. But what will actually happen is if render image fails, uh, it will bypass this guy and jump all the way down to, your, to our cat here. Now the reason why is because uh, this is kind of like a, a quirk of promises you can't really avoid. That's why I recommend you use the dot catch, right? Because the dot catch always comes in after your, your promise and then you always know it's going to catch whatever it was before or anything that happened before it. Uh, and so this error handler happens because of that. You can't put a, a comma error handler here because that really meant uh, trying to catch an error from up right. So that's one of the most tricky things about promises. Every single article you'll see it talk about error handling and how it can be, this can be really tricky. And it's gotten me so many times, I'm just going to belabor it to death. Okay. Um, any questions so far on error, like this kind of handling of errors uh, with promises? So that error function only applies to fetch user then, and not the end block? So it applies to uh, fetch user and anything above it that doesn't have an error handler. So if animate uh, down failed, uh, you know, that's a good question. I think it would be called here, um, but I actually don't know because it's nested in here. Um, does anyone know? Yeah, well, it does, wouldn't it be only if you got into that re that uh, success um, of, of this fetch user? Yeah, you would either get fetch user, yeah, you'd have to get to fetch user to get to that error, because otherwise you would have the error on that, because you're, you're in a level. Right? See, yeah, I'm not sure if it matters if it's in a level or not. Maybe it does. Uh, that's a good question, though. I, I, I need to answer that question. And so then if you had, instead of that error block, if you had dot catch, if your error was at render image, it would call that dot catch? If, if, if there was a dot catch, if this was replaced with a dot catch, right. then it would catch an error from render image. Yeah. <coughs> it would uh, be, that's, that's why I recommend it, because then it makes sense. But it would, it would also catch errors from fetch user as well. Is your catch at the bottom, can it tell which promise will kind of reject it? Gets, gets uh, no, it's only based on the uh, the error that you pass back. So you throw an error. Uh, when you have errors like this, uh, let's say you catch it. Let's say you have a try catch in one of your your handlers, and you throw a new error. That error will usually have a stack trace which will help you. And that's actually uh, another kind of tip I'll be talking about soon is how to handle these stack traces and, and kind of try to debug some of these because it can be hard. Uh, it's probably where people talk about promise help. Uh, any other questions? Okay. All right, so other potential pitfall. Okay, so I, I talked about this probably uh, already, but this continues the chain uh, as if everything happens. So once you handle your error, if you want to log something and then throw it again, you need to make sure you throw a new error. It's just kind of, it's kind of like uh, uh, try catch exceptions, it, it's caught. And, everything, and the code will assume you've done everything that possible to recover. So that's one thing to remember is, if you don't want to continue the chain, throw it again. Throw, throw your new error or, or, or do something else. Okay, so I talked about uh, this. Okay, so this is the, oh, sorry. I was just talking about I was in a conference and there was a big old movie screen and people kept doing that. So I apologize. Uh, so this is equivalent to uh, uh, dot catch. The dot then with an undefined and then an error handler that comes after that. Uh, that's actually the way the spec says it. Uh, most people, uh, most libraries re implement this as a dot catch or a dot fail. Um, and actually, that's what uh, dot catch just does that under the covers. Um, that's part of why promises are so, um, they're so simple, but you can do all sorts of cool stuff with them. Okay, so there, this is a replacing with, with the uh, dot catch, and we're talking about that. So. Okay, uh, other potential pitfalls, this is just from uh, my vast experience of one and a half years working with them, uh, is once you're in the promise land, stay there. Don't try to mix 
a callback type library with your promise library and then try to manage them together. Uh, it's best to, uh, if you're working with a bunch of callbacks, convert them as soon as you can to, uh, to promises and then use them as promises. It will just reduce the amount of code you're dealing with and, uh, and keep you sane. It's kind of like drinking the Kool-Aid. Once you start it, you're going to like it, I promise. Um, okay, errors can be swallowed. I talked about this. This is a feature. Usually one that catches you by surprise. Uh, always, uh, always return your promises uh, from your function and then also try to catch your errors. Uh, if, if, if you know that uh, you say you're in some sort of controller function and you say, you know, I'm going to call this, func this promise set of things that's going to load all these wonderful promise things. Um, return it to something that can, that can always put in this catch or uh, this catch at the end of it so that you know uh, something, if something goes wrong, you'll know something went wrong. Or, uh, well, that's, no, you should just always do that. Know more about it. You can also get lost in the promised land. Okay, so most of this, most of this uh, talk I've been talking about uh, native promises, um, but I've been using Q forever, uh, and this one always caught me off guard. So if you're using Q, uh, you should, this is code from my presentation. Uh, if, for example, animate, so I, okay, the way you build a promise in Q, and this will probably, if you're using any other library, pro probably how you also build promises. Uh, you, you call Q.defer, it builds like a new promise object, basically. Um, and then on your complete function, you just call defer.resolve, and you, you can return the same thing, right? This is all very standard spec stuff. And then at the end of your thing, uh, your method, you return that defer, that promise. Again, make sure you return deferred that promise. If you don't, uh, then you're definitely lost in the promised land, and you'll never you know, spend hours like, why is this not going? Um, okay. Actually, yeah. So what will happen is that you'll, you'll return nothing, and then your your next uh, step in the promise will, will look for a, a promise to resolve on, and it won't, won't do anything. All right. So if animate throws an exception, you are not quite you're not in the promised land yet, basically. So if you're not in the, you're not inside of a then handler or something like that, uh, and animate for some reason uh, throws an exception before you uh, before you can complete this, you won't return the deferred promise. So there won't be no promises coming back. But you also won't be inside of a, a, a prom if you're not inside of a promise handler already. Uh, you'll just kind of go and uh, go in some sort of easier world, right? <coughs> Where it's something's gone wrong. Uh, maybe it'll throw and it'll this will finally catch up all the way to the console log and un uncaught exception. Um, but basically, if you're if when you're creating these promises around these callback thing uh, type APIs, uh, be careful and try to make sure and reason about your codes that, and, and watch for other items that could, could go wrong. So the way you'd fix this, for example, is you put a try here and you put a catch at the bottom, and on the catch you say defer dot resolve uh, reject. I'm sorry, reject with that error, and then then you'd be kind of safe. Um, that makes your code kind of ugly, so just use this sparingly and just kind of uh, know. Um, all right, stack traces can disappear. So here's my aired out one before. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open up my console. And I'm going to my NAJS. Okay, so here I've got a, let me see if I can make this bigger. So this is the equivalent to, for Q, this is the equivalent uh, to catch, dot catch. Um, and I got my error here. And what I would, if you look at your, if you look at my call stack here, um, you'll see a whole lot of nothing, a whole lot of QJS. And this is really uh, frustrating when you're trying to uh, debug what's going on with your promises. Um, it's also why it's really great to have, to throw errors out, because then you can do something cool, like doing error.stack. I've already done it at once. Um, but basically here I can see, okay, I cannot read property value of undefined, and then it gives me, okay, input.value was, was empty, basically. Uh, I have no input on my screen. So when I try to get it, I kind of get it, do an exception, um, fetch user through an exception, and, and here. So that's where I recommend uh, um, this error.stack is always a key, key element in terms of finding out your, your errors. If you don't throw an error and you just 
in your reject handlers, you can just return a string and say, something went wrong. Um, then you won't have that stack trace. You will have your message, which is nice, um, but you won't have that uh, stack trace. So uh, other things to consider. Uh, now, Chrome does have an async uh, checkbox here, um, which is really nice, um, but for some reason was not working on my, um, my queue promises here. So I think it works better on like XHR requests and that sort of thing. So you can see what kicked off your, your AJAX request and then kind of get back to say, oh, I've got my, uh, this callback was happened from that. Um, so that's really helpful, but I guess it's not always uh, reliable. Okay, any questions on, on uh, errors? I spent a lot of time on them because they really are kind of um, important in terms of getting it right. Um, yeah, so your stack traces can disappear. Um, great. Okay, so I hope I've given you a good understanding of promises. I've tried to kind of show how they can be uh, uh, useful, and over, especially over callbacks, um, but they can be really powerful, uh, especially in some of those animations. Um, you can, uh, I didn't get to show a promise at all, but you can essentially say resolve when all these promises resolve. So kick off this request to GitHub, animate this, do this animation, and when they're all done, uh, let me know, and I can, uh, I can, I can then do next, next things, do great things. Uh, we have a, a component over at our company where we have uh, this really uh, cool uh, animated context menu that, that kind of pops out. We've got eight different animations going on at the same time. It's all driven by promises. Uh, we have lots of small methods composed of saying, animate a little, a little, uh, little line out this way. And then we combine that with a bunch of cute at alls and animate a line and animate some arcs and we get a really uh, cool effect in a very composable way, very easy to change those animations. Um, so I hope you give me uh, a good idea of what, what they're all about uh, and why they're so powerful. Um, and I think what's the next big thing, uh, promises were the next big thing, uh, I guess, I don't know when it's, people started getting excited about them. Um, but the next big thing is these uh, generators, this feature about, uh, that makes you write even more readable asynchronous code. Um, but I'm not going to talk about those right now. Okay, any questions? Nick? Why is jQuery bad? jQuery to birds? How long do you have? Oh, I, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I can speak to a little bit of them. I, they've, they've caught me off guard uh, once or twice, but um, one of their, their problems is that they don't... Um, re one of the promise A plus specs is that you always return a new promise in, when you're the end handler. Um, jQuery defers don't do that. They don't call... Uh, you just, they just kind of call a bunch of... Uh, so if you call dot then and dot then on that same one, it's gonna, it kind of just calls it immediately instead of doing it. And it also does call it immediately. So. Uh, for example, most of the, the stack trace disappearing, that's, that's what the promise is supposed to do. It's always supposed to be executing in a new event loop context. jQueries will, will, will be like, well, if I'm already done, I'm going to call your data then immediately. And that can actually cause, um, it's caught, I can't remember the exact case, but that's been, it, it was a very annoying bug that I had to track down on our project uh, with it calling a little, essentially too soon. So that's some of it. I, I'm, probably other people can have have a lot more uh, to say about them. Anyone else want to volunteer? Okay. <laughs> question answered. Next question. Yeah. So I've used the Q flavor for it, and one of the cool functions in there is Q.all, where you give it like 10 promises, and then when they're all done, it executes a new thing. Is there a way to do that in native promises? Yes, it's, it's just called promise.all. And actually, I will show you. If I can. I'm pull my code. You can see it yourselves. Uh, I was actually using that for uh, our. I, I didn't think I had enough time to kind of get into it. Um, let me just close these. Close all. And I'll talk about here my little anime. Uh, there you go. You guys see that okay? Um, so I, this is kind of how I implemented it first before I found out I was going to do it all in native promises. Um, but basically you can say, you know, return Q all, animate up and animate right. So instead of doing it all in one animate call, I can kind of compose them with this Q all. Um, the answer to your question though is promises.all and you just pass it in the right promises. 
Any other questions? Nick? What, so, what browsers support uh, native promises now? Let me Google that. This <laughs> 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 is. <laughs> No, I, I should have known with, uh, that answer. Um, looks like they're whoa, fairly well supported, um, even across Safari. Isn't that sad? Yeah. We're saying that about Safari now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any other questions? Looks like I11, unfortunately, is still no. Um, but the shim, like I said, there's nothing super special about the shim, about promises in general that you can't use them uh, pretty much anywhere. So there, the shim is out there if you search. Uh, Native promises. Other questions? Okay. Thanks, everybody.